Okay, so now let us look at an interesting example of ratio. We have to divide rupees 60 in the ratio of 1 is to 2 between Kilti and Kiran. Now what does this mean? Dividing a quantity in some particular ratio. What does it mean? It simply means that if I have this 60 rupees or, or, or first let us just look at this 1 is to 2. What does this 1 is to 2 means? It means simply that, see this is the lowest form of the ratio. Now what, what it means here is that for every 1 rupee that is given to Kirti, we have to give 2 rupees to Kiran. So and that is what we can say as 1 is to 2. This is the ratio. So can we say that for every 1 rupee that we give to Kirti, we have to give 2 and this means that minimum we have to give a total of 3 rupees. Okay, that is 1 plus 2. Right, so this is, you can, we, we can understand this uh, by using a representation of a fraction. That is, we have this circle where we, so this represents 60 rupees and we have to divide it into three parts. Why three parts? Because we are just adding the numerator and denominator and the total, this thing, has to be equal to 60 and out of this 60 one part of it okay one part of the 60 rupees that will go to Kirti and the remaining two parts of the 60 rupees need to go to Kiran okay so the fractional representation for Kirti would be one third that is Kirti needs to get one third of 60 rupees and Kiran has to get two thirds of 60 rupees. Okay, so this simply, if we simplify these, so we have the money for Kiran for Kirti. We'll start with Kirti because it's a simpler one. Kirti is one third of. 60 which gives us 20 so we have to give 20 rupees to Kirti and money for Kiran is two thirds of 60 which means it is equal to 40 and we simplify this and if you see this 20 by 40 if you take this ratio 20 by 40 it is in the ratio of 1 is to 2 or it is 1 is to 2 okay so this is one way of solving this problem I will give you another way of solving this and this time we will use algebra so let us say that we just take some some person's money let us say that we, ha we give x rupees x to Kirti and in that case I have to give 2x it's twice to Kiran okay now x to Kirti and 2x to Kiran this means that we have x plus 2x it gives us 60 rupees that is the total so we found an algebraic equation over here now we solve for x so we get 3x equals 60 and then we divide both the sides that is the left hand side and the right hand side by 3 okay so we get x over here and 60 by 3 is 20 so x is what we are giving to Kirti which is 20 and for Kiran which is 2x is 2 into 20 which gives us 40 so this is uh, so let, 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 let us just revise the methods in the first method we simply add the numerator and denominator to get to get a whole part and then for, from that whole part we represent these parts both the numerator and denominator are represented as fractions which we then multiply by the total number that is total 60 in this case to arrive at the corresponding equivalent numbers that is the, the part of that proportion 
and the other way was using algebra where one quantity we represent as x the other one becomes 2x because the ratio is how many times right so if kirti has one kiran will have twice so that is what the meaning of the ratio is so x plus 2x and then we, we just add both of these form it to be and make it equal to whatever the number we have here which is 60 and then we solve this algebraic equation to get both the numbers so these are the two ways of attacking this problem now let us look at another example and this is a bit tricky here tricky not in the sense that how do we uh, tricky not in the sense that what you have to do but it's the way in which you arrive at the answer for this so there are 100 and two teachers in a school of 33,000 students find the ratio of number of teachers to the number of students now I know that the number of teachers T equals 102 and the number of students S is equal to 33,000 3300 now the ratio we have to find out the ratio T by S and always remember that we need to represent the ratios in their lowest form so here we have 102 by 3300 now what is interesting about this is I cannot come up with a number straight away with so that I can reduce it to its smallest form so what we will do is we will try to attack it in a simpler way we try to find out first the smallest number that can divide both the numerator and denominator so we can see that there is a 2 and a 0 right so I can divide both the numerator and denominator by 2 using the divisibility tests that we have discussed earlier in the chapter right earlier in chapter on playing with numbers so we know that if a number ends with 0 2 4 6 or 8 then they are divisible by 2 so in this case we will divide both the numerator and denominator by 2 to come up with smaller numbers so 3300 by 2 now let us see what we get so when I divide 102 by 2 we get 51 and in this case 3300 by 2 we get 2 times 1 is 2 then 2 times 6 we get 12 and then we get 2 times 5 so we get 1650 which is correct 16 times 2 is 3200 plus 100 you add to it so 1650 now we got this number now again we have to see whether we can still reduce it further or not so can now if I see the last digit it is 1 and 0 no so we cannot divide them straight away by 2 but 51 can be divided by 3 and how about 65 65 can be divided 1650 by 3 let's just try to check it out so I can do 51 51 divided by 3 and 1650 divided by 3 now if I do 51 by 3 the we know that it is straight away 17 but what happens when 1650 is divided by 3 so I will just do the calculation over here 1650 to be divided by 3 so we get 3 times 5 3 times 5 is 15 you get 1 here again 3 times 5 is 15 and 0 becomes 0 yes so we should get a 550 right so therefore I can write this as 550 therefore the ratio of teacher to the students is 17 teachers for every 550 students sorry this is 550 so in this example the key point to be noted here is that if we find big numbers we should treat them systematically that is we first divide by 2 the smallest number then we find out which is the next number which divides them and so on